Yeah. Hey, Guy. Uh, I'm Dacre Stoker, if you haven't met me before, the great-grandnephew of Bram Stoker, and it's, it's really a great pleasure to be here representing the family. Um, I like to start, it is positive, but yesterday was the 107th anniversary of Bram's death. And so there's, there's a part of an obituary that I like to read, and I've done this a number of places around the world, and it's really quite, it's quite nice. And then I'll end with all the thank yous and the pulling down of, of this. But it tells um, a, a lot. When you do research like guys like Mike and I do about Bram, one of the places to look for are, are what other people have said about Bram. And of course, this town is one of the amazing places where there's people still living who have memories passed down. And that's, that's really special. Other ones, you have to go to newspapers from 107 years ago. So this one's from an excerpt from the New York Times, 1912. And it's just an excerpt. I didn't do the whole thing today. But Stoker relieved Irving of every possible care, was the active host at the famous supper parties at the Lyceum Theater, stood between Irving and the crowd of theater aspirants and would-be playwrights, he paid the bills and arranged all the details of transportation. He was never tired, never depressed. He remembered the faces and the names of all he ever met, or if he did not, he had the skill to make others believe he did. Undoubtedly, much of Sir Henry Irving's success was due to him. For the rest, he wrote fluently, was eagerly in interested in all the affairs of the world. Deep down in his nature was a touch of Celtic mysticism. It sought expression in literary form. But for his stories, they were quite queer and were not of a memorable quality. His Life of Irving, however, is a noteworthy book. He had plenty of friends and enough enemies to indicate that his friendship was worth having. The embodiment of health and strength and geniality, he seemed to die too young. He was only 64 years of age. Almost everyone who knew him will say that he should have lived to 90 and kept a young heart in his old age. That's Bram in a nutshell. But other parts of Bram is because people like you have kept his spirit alive. And all of you have a, an interest, some more than others, and, and I appreciate that. And putting up this plaque today is a wonderful way to memorialize him in brick and mortar, in metal, in a wonderful place where he stayed and, and continues to sort of stay in his spirit. So I thank the owners of the Historic Environment Scotland for doing this, for Martin and Lucy Taylor for allowing it to happen on the side of, of the Camonic Arms Hotel, the Port Errol Cruden Bay Heritage Group, and also the late James Cruikshank and his wife, who had the foresight to be really hospitable and develop a bond with Bram that kept him coming back. And just today, Mike showed me an interesting quote by Annie uh, Cruikshank that tells more about Bram. Annie, who was quoted as saying, Bram was very jovial person, unlike the characters in his book. <laughs> I have to thank my friend Mike Shepard for dragging me here. And sort of like Bram, what I can say, similar to what Bram said in your book. Bram, Bram mentioned, after coming here twice and signing in your book, he said, delighted with everything and everybody, I hope to come again. And this is my second time, and I'm delighted with everybody and everyone, and hope to come again if invited. So I thank you for having me here. Um, and I will, I will finish by saying the people of Cruden Bay seem to love my great grand uncle, and they've provided the perfect environment for his writing. This was a place he bonded with. He wouldn't have come back here 13 times and, and put out such books as The Water's Mow, Mystery of the Sea, Good Portions of, of Dracula, and The Crooked Sand Short Story. So it obviously was a very important place for him, but it was ju just as important for his writing as for his peace of mind. And for a man that was so busy, um, it, I can see that many other people enjoy their time in this lovely town. And to that, I thank you very much. And without further ado, I will represent to you folks this wonderful plaque but i do need a one two three from the rest of the crowd <laughs> can we all do this ready one two three yes yeah.